Hi everyone, my name is Madison Ramper. I'm a water quality specialist with HRG and I'm here today to provide an overview of the Cumberland County Countywide Action Plan Clean Water Grant Program. For more details and specifics on some of the items that I'll be providing an overview on, please refer to the guidelines document found right. on the Clean Water Cumberland website. So today we'll be looking at the program background and objectives. We'll be going over eligible applicants and activities, as well as those that are ineligible. We'll look at the evaluation criteria and application process. And lastly, we'll go over a program timeline. Just to give a little bit of background information on the countywide action plan. So Cumberland County's countywide action plan or CAP includes a variety of water quality projects. The program itself uses funding from federal, state, and nonprofits to help get projects with pollutant reduction benefits funded and implemented. Due to the project implementation that Cumberland County has been working on, they have been able to reduce nitrogen by 1.1 million pounds and phosphorus by 36,000 pounds annually. Despite all this great effort and progress, towards this pollutant reduction goal is more work is needed and thus this program was created. So the Clean Water Grant Program provides federal, state, county, and nonprofit funding to organizations like municipalities, nonprofits, businesses, and educational institutions with the ultimate goal to help implement water quality projects that align with our CAP goals. Going over the five program objectives that we have, the first is to maximize the impact of limited pollution reduction funding by investing in our priority water quality projects. The second is to develop a water quality project backlog that can help us leverage additional government and nonprofit funding. Third, we're looking to pursue multifaceted pollution reduction strategies across a variety of water quality stakeholders. The fourth objective is to accelerate progress towards the county's pollution reduction goals. And the last one is to institutionalize an annual project identification process. So looking at the funding for this program, so part of CAP, there's an annual program funding that depends upon the level of federal, state, corporate, and nonprofit sources. These will be secured by the county. At the current moment, we're anticipating that approximately $500,000 will be available for the Clean Water Grant Program in 2025. There is no minimum or maximum grant award amount, and there is also no cash match requirement. However, projects with local match will receive a higher priority. It is also important to note that all funding decisions are at the sole discretion of Cumberland County and contingent upon the approval of projects by DEP. Looking at some eligible applicants, we have nonprofit organizations, municipal governments, educational institutions, businesses that are located within Cumberland County, and other organizations as deemed eligible by the county. Moving on to our eligible activities, on the table on the right there in green is our eligible agricultural water quality projects. The blue are the eligible suburban and urban water quality projects. Of that list there, those in red are identified as our high priority types of projects. Now projects may include multiple BMPs or best management practices, so don't feel limited to only one or two. You can also look at the definitions of these eligible projects at the BMP guide in that link there below. Part of the program is also to have shovel ready projects. This means projects that are ready for construction. A few ineligible activities that we wanted to note. The first is engineering and design work without construction included as part of the proposal. The second is any planning, preparation, submission of grant paperwork, things like that. And the last ineligible activity is meals and room or event space rentals. Looking at some of the evaluation criteria that will be assessed once your applications are submitted to us. The first is reduction level. So we're looking to see how many pounds per year your project can reduce in nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Now this parameter is something that's not included on the application. We will be running it in the CAS model ourselves. The second one there, reduction efficiency, is the cost per pound of pollutant removed. That is also something that we will be assessing on our end. 
Project location. So these are applications that benefit streams that are deemed as impaired by PADEP. Another option for that are projects that are located on preserved farms. The priority of BMP types, which we had discussed previously, those high priority categories that were in red, um, will be a priority project for us. For multiple plan and goal synergy, so projects that achieve local goals and objectives that are identified in another plan document. So for example, you have the climate action plan, hazard mitigation plan, those are all good things to um, show that synergy with the goals. The next one is expanded impact. So projects that expand existing areas with BMPs in a contingent manner. So for example, let's say the stream restoration occurred on a property that is just downstream or upstream of your current project. Collaborative effort, those are projects that are resulting from collaborative partnerships, whether it's multi-municipal, multi-organizational, um, all those kinds of different collaborative efforts will receive extra credit on the evaluation. For additional funding, projects with local match will have preference over other projects. Looking at the application process, so first you'll probably watch this video, then you'll take a look at some of the guidelines and go through some of the documents on the website. Your next step would be to schedule the required pre-application meeting. So this needs to be scheduled by the applicant before June 7th. These are 30 minute discussions with technical staff just to go over your project and answer any questions you may have that are specific to your project. These meetings are first come first serve and meeting time blocks are scheduled for Tuesdays 10 a.m. to noon and Wednesdays 1.30 to 3.30. So you're going to go ahead and email the emails listed below to schedule a 30 minute time frame. Something else that we wanted to also note is that we are not accepting paper copies at this time. All applications must be submitted electronically via email. Applications must also be submitted by an authorized signatory of the applying organization. And just to kind of throw out the deadline so you're aware, the application deadline is June 14th. So what needs to be included in your application? The first item that needs to be included is the program application itself. So this is a fillable Word document. There you can see the, the document with the table. That is a fillable Word document. We're able to go in and add any information that is requested on the left there, as well as provide your signature. The second item is the completeness checklist. So that's the one on the right. This includes all the supplementary documents that you may need to include, such as project narrative, any permit documentation, site plans, and even things like letters of support. So making sure we also attach those um, supplemental documents is also very important when we turn in our application. Now to just go over the timeline for you. So the application period opened April 15th of 2024. We're going to have those pre application meetings that are required between now and June 7th. The application deadline itself is June 14th, so we need to have those emails sent over to us before that deadline. In between June and September, we'll be looking at the applications and reviewing them. Between September and October, we'll be sitting down to decide what projects we need to submit to DEP for the block grant application. Come December, we'll find out from DEP exactly what amount is awarded to Cumberland County. In February, there will be notification of the award to the applicants. In March, we'll be working on contracting. And then between March and December of 2025, that's going to be our period of grant performance. And with that, I wanted to leave you all with two contacts that you reach out to for any questions you may have regarding the Clean Water Grant Program. So please feel free to reach out to Josh Clark or Elizabeth Grant. Um, I wanted to thank you all for listening in today to learn about the Clean Water Grant Program, and I hope that I was able to provide a great overview of the program and help along your application process.